Hi everyone, uh, I'm Stephen from Sligo Library and today I'm going to read a few chapters of Football Academy, Captain Fantastic. It's a book written by Tom Palmer. The best team in Europe. The first game of the new year was not going well. At least not as well as the previous year had ended. In December, just before the Christmas break, Premier League United's under-12s had won a tournament in London, London, beating both Arsenal and Chelsea. And not long before that, they had beaten Real Madrid. They had been written about as one of the best under-12 teams in Europe. A crop of players that would go all the way. But today, they were at Tranmere Rovers, and they had just let a third goal in. It was 3-0. Ryan, the team's captain, was furious. Not furious with his teammates, but with his mum. She was on the sidelines, shouting like she often did, arguing with the referee, questioning the tactics of the under 12s coach, making Ryan feel embarrassed. The referee blew his whistle for half time as soon as the third goal was scored, and Ryan's mum went quiet. Once the players had gathered on the touchline and were having their sports drinks, Steve, the under-12s manager, started to speak. He was of medium height with dark hair and a deep voice. Right, lads, he said, pausing. This is not going well. Ryan smiled. He liked his manager. He knew he'd handle this properly. But don't worry too much, Steve went on. We've had lots of chances since the game started. We've had lots of changes since last year. Only Ryan is left from the defence that played Chelsea. Ryan dropped his head. He knew that Steve didn't mean to blame him, but he felt responsible. After all, he was the captain. But Steve was right about the changes in the team. They'd lost their best defender, James, who had decided to give up football. Their first choice full backs were still in Ireland celebrating the new year, and the stand in left back was in a really bad mood. Yet Ryan still felt responsible. Steve continued We need the midfield to protect the defence more in the second half. Don't worry about getting back in the game. Just keep it tight and try to win the second half, yeah? 11, nod, 11 lads nodded. When they were back on the pitch, Ryan went around the players to fire them up, especially Tony, who had just replaced James in the centre of the fence. Then Ryan went over to Craig. He was a big lad with wild hair. He had often played left midfield. Ryan knew that he had to handle this one carefully. Craig had been difficult recently, as if something was troubling him. Keep it up, Craig, he said. It's hard dropping into the fence, but you're doing a good job helping Tony out with that striker. Craig shrugged. Really, you are, Ryan said. He was worried about Craig. He barely spoke these days, always angry. Ryan patted Craig's back. You can handle this striker. I know you can. Craig said, grinning. I'll handle him all right. Ryan wasn't sure what this had meant. But once the game got started again, he didn't have time to think about it. The Tranmere forwards were all over them, and Craig did what he had told Ryan he was going to do. Chapter 2. The Tackle. The next time the troublesome rat Tranmere striker got the ball, he sprinted towards the United defence. He easily beat Tony, who just couldn't match his pace. Then Craig ran at him. Craig was a good player. He could play left back or left wing with ease. He could tackle, he had a lot of pace for a big lad. He wasn't a dirty player, normally. But as the striker pushed the ball into the penalty area, Craig lunged at him, two-footed, making no attempt to reach the ball, just the man. It was a wild challenge. The striker went down hard and he didn't roll about. He just lay there, no moving. Something was wrong. And suddenly half the Tranmere team were pushing at Craig, shoving him. Some United players got involved too. Sam and Daniel, two of Craig's mates. Craig ended up on the ground, looking up at the Tranmere players with a smile on his face. 
If the referee and team's coaches had not arrived then, things could have got worse. Much worse. After the fighting, Ryan had noticed two things. First, his mum clapping, as if she was pleased with Craig's tackle. Then Steve, his manager, talking to the Tranmere manager, saying sorry. Ryan was not surprised when, the, when Craig stood up and the referee showed him a red card. Craig shrugged and walked off the pitch. Ryan saw Steve waiting for him on the touchline. He felt as low as he could remember feeling as a Man United player. They were losing 3-0. They were down to 10 men. His mum was behaving badly and he lost half his teammates. And now it was a penalty to Tranmere. Thomas, United's keeper, stood tall to put the Tranmere player off. But it didn't work. Tranmere scored. Now United were 4-0 down and there was still 14 minutes left. Ryan went around to all his team, trying to G them up. Come on, we can still get something out of this half. We can still do it. We can get one goal back. This was something he started doing recently. Earlier in the season, he had a lot of trouble with the other players, with Steve. He'd been, to be honest with himself, a bully. He'd been a bad captain, and Steve had stripped him of the captaincy. But now, Ryan was back as captain and determined to do the right thing, to be a good leader. Only, he didn't feel like that was what he was saying to his teammates was true today. He knew that today, whatever he said, they were going to get a sound beating. The game ended 6-0, the worst result of the season. As they came off the pitch, Ryan could hear the Fran Mayer players' parents cheering for their team and booing United. And above these voices, Ryan could hear his mum arguing with someone. He didn't want to look around. He really wished that she didn't come to watch him play. She was really embarrassing. He saw Chi looking at him, felt sorry for him, and Tony looking at him as if to say, can you shut your mum up? Ryan was wondering, could he just stop her coming? Could he ask her to stop coming? It had gone on long enough. Every week she had become more and more unbearable. Should he talk to her about it? He wasn't sure. Anyways, before that, he had to talk to someone else. So here we have the match ratings for all the players. The 11 players, most of them got a four or a five. Ryan himself got a seven. Craig, who got sent off, got a two. This is out of 10. So dressing down. The United under 12s walked back to the Tranmere dressing room in silence. Across the car park, along the corridor, no one speaking. Everyone knew that Steve was going to have something to say. Right, lads, Steve said. No, this was not his normal voice. Normally it was loud and clear. Today it was quiet and soft. We've played 20 or so games this season, maybe 25, and I've taken something out of each and every one of them, something good. But today I'm struggling. Everyone's head was down, looking at the floor. Then Steve said nothing for what seemed like ages. It was like a minute's silence before the football match, as if someone had died. During that minute, Ryan thought about his mum, how she always shouted at the referee and the players. He wondered if his mum's behaviour was part of what, was, what Steve was talking about, whether or not he was determined to talk to Steve about her. Ryan knew it would be helpful to Steve continued, we were a few players light today. Steve broke his silence. Look, it's almost like the beginning of the season again. It took us a while to get used to, to each other. New players, new ways of playing. A couple of players then looked up. Jake and Eunice, they had been new from the beginning of the season. They remembered how hard it was to settle in. Steve's voice grown louder. But what I won't tolerate are tackles like that, Craig. Ryan looked at Craig. He was staring back at Steve. His face neither happy nor sad. 
It was expressionless. Nobody spoke. It was rare for Steve to pick on one of the lads in front of the rest of, uh, rest of the team, for him to single even one player out. It meant he was angry, even though he wasn't showing it. I want to talk to you tomorrow, Craig, in my office, okay? Craig carried on staring at Steve, then he shrugged. Ryan saw Steve look away.